Aloha, it's Dave Lawrence, and I'm backstage at the Blaisdell Concert Hall, and it's exciting because we have one of Hawaii's favorite bands, as Uncle Tom Moffat constantly calls them, uh, America, and Dewey Bunnell and Jerry Beckley. Aloha, Brother Dewey. Hello, Dave. How are you? I'm very good, and, and Brother Jerry, thanks for taking some time. Hey, man. Thanks for having us. Uh, you're quite welcome, man. You guys both, I talked to, it was the Here and Now record, I guess. It was 2007. We did a couple of interviews. Not that I'd expect you to remember them, because you've been talking to a lot of people back then or since then but uh, it was fun and it was a remarkable thing when that record came out because as I, as I just said Honolulu Hawaii in general is a place where you guys have had a strong connection for a long time anything from your end as to why that might be certain bands just kind of catch on out here any reflection over the years why you've made the connection you have in the islands do we? Well, I mean, we always love the environment. Everybody loves Hawaii, and I don't think anybody doesn't. So when we first came, it was, what, 72, probably our very first tour. Tom, in fact, brought us over. He was reminding us it was 30... 73 was the thir- first year he did us, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking it was March 17th, 1973, actually. <laughs> so, I mean, in all those years, we, uh, I, think, I think the fact that we sing harmonies, we have a kind of a more laid-back sound, if you want to get into that part of it, and, and it, it lends itself to, uh, you know, sitting on the beach and peaceful things. But in addition to that, we've made an album here. We made an album in 76 in Kauai Harbor. Um, I even have a connection here uh, on the Big Island. Uh, my son is there, and my grandson was born over there. So we don't get over enough to see them, of course. Son lives full-time? Yeah, he does, in Kona. And my grandson will be three uh, in November. So, you know, we really have an actual bond here in that sense. But we've always enjoyed performing on the islands, and uh, here in Honolulu particularly. What's your, what's your son do over in uh, Kona? He's got a green gardener, a uh, little self business there and he's, he kicks back he's a he's a full on uh, local local howley i guess now with well, some of those things you said about the laid back sound the harmonies uh that's good good music to cruise to kind of why it could have had the impact it's had here in the islands all these years any reflections yourself jerry on why it is america for so many decades has had uh, a resilient fan base here in the islands well first of all uh we keep coming back we love the island so i think that we have um tried to come on a regular basis to say hello to the fans and perform live we have a long history of actually playing here although we've played many different places the shell and and all the different islands um there's such a thing as hawaiian style which is of course a more laid-back thing it doesn't mean that that, you know the people of the islands can't appreciate heavy metal or or all the other types of genres that have occurred over the last few decades but i think what we naturally play is a really good fit for the people of the islands. Their their own natural music is acoustic, beautiful, lots of harmonies, beautiful melodies, and that's really one of the things we focus on. It, it is. It's a good fit. I like that word. That's a good descriptor. Um, and as I, I have this, uh, I've been blessed over nine years of broadcasting here in the islands. I have a couple of these hardcore loyal listeners, and they send me historical stuff from the past. So I have all these notes about all the old America gigs. And uh, Steve, loyal listener Steve, i got to give him some plugs. So it's uh, it's been a few weeks since the passing of Dan P. He was last here with you and the band at Aloha Stadium, July 5th, 1976. And I've read uh, the meaningful words that you've printed online and have been um, put out all over the place in your statements on Dan. But I just I felt it was appropriate to maybe have some recollections. How, how do you remember Dan doing? I remember him as one of our, uh, you know, we were a loyal band of kind of gypsy boys out of high school when we were teenagers and writing and singing and playing music and creating it together. It was just a, it was a beautiful time. Uh, uh, he was very uh, funny, intelligent, t- uh, talented. He wrote some of great songs that live on still, of course, and we perform uh, several of those on stage at night. He was a big island guy, too. He loved the islands, and um, he and his wife, Catherine, spent time here and uh, in other islands around the world so um it's it was a shock we were we were saddened and still are to some degree we still talked about it since it happened it's been a about a month now but um you know what do you do it's a, it's a loss and uh, just trying to remember the good t- times and the and the the legacy he's left and uh, wish him you know, rest in peace. And, and a huge legacy and lots of good times. What were the Aloha Stadium show? Are there any memories? Do you have memories of actually playing in that place? 
the seventies? I don't remember any of that. That means you were there, <laughs> uh, Jerry. My, uh, well, I, can, I, I remember because we had three incredible gigs in a row. Uh, one of the busiest and most fantastic weeks. We played in uh, Oakland Stadium on July second. We then, uh, and these were with Beach Boys. We went to July third um, and Anaheim Stadium, which was again with the Beach Boys and 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 um, Santana. There's a poster in our Harbor album, okay. I think, and it's, people wonder what that's, and it's from the... Uh, Is that a day on the green kind of thing from Bill? Well, it was in the baseball stadium, but it was more than the stadium normally would hold because it filled the entire infield as well. But we then flew on the actual date of the millennium, July 4th, ni- uh, 1976, the actual ceremony. We were in the air because we were flying here, and we played with Cecilia and, Cap- and Capono on the 5th, so I remember it very well. I remember running around on the... AstroTurf, I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> at what was a really new stadium, too, yeah, yeah. A, a, at the time. Um, and as uh, I guess it was Jerry correctly had the date or the year, rather, of when your first gig in the islands was. It was March 17th, 1973. It was just across the, the parking lot at the arena. Um, Dewey, you were 21. Yeah. Jerry was 20. Dan was 22. Any memories of that show that had David Lindley as an opener? <laughs> Wow, was it David Lindley? <laughs> David Lindley, some of your listeners will know, uh, at least we came to know him when he was working with Jackson Brown, but he also coincidentally played on our very first album, which we made in England. And here was this American amazing player that happened to be working in town, I think, with Terry Reed. And uh, we were able to snag him to play on uh, two songs, I think, on the f- first album. So I, di- I didn't remember that, they- that David played uh, that show. But I just remember, you know, wow, Hawaii. It was sort of a magical place that we'd all heard about as kids and never been here and to be playing music. And and uh, it was all part of that whole kind of, are we really here kind of a thing. I remember we pulled out all the stops and enjoyed everything from the beach, learning to scuba dive. And this was over the course of years. That very day that you're talking about is very difficult for me to remember. Sure. And I never expect people to. I just like throwing it out there because I know for listeners sakes, they like they can put they can put themselves back in time. And occasionally when you throw the opening act in there, someone go, oh, yeah, I remember we got in a fight backstage. I hit him with a folding chair. That's true. We have played here many times, though. And and we were one time at the Diamond Head Crater for a a New Year's. That was a huge show. We had another particular uh, kind of uh, important date when uh, most groups as you know they try to wrap up their tours here so that they can uh, play the Hawaiian shows and then unwind and stuff we had been working the um, Hearts album in 75 all through the summer and when we got here we were staying out at the Kala and uh, we were getting ready for the show or just floating around out in the pool and stuff and Sister Goldenhair went number one that day so we played we played here uh HIC on the day that it went number one in the country. So that was, of course, very memorable. And certainly that Crater gig is one. Uh, the Crater has such a, um, I don't know how to describe it, as like this this legendary venue. It's had a lot of shows through the years. A lot of people have been there. Your gig there that you're talking about, January 1st, 1976, Diamond Head Crater with Tower Power, Billy Preston, Cheech and Chong, Sly Stone. They built the stage so high, and they didn't. They were not able to get the equipment up to your stage with yeah. traditional means, so you didn't go on to like 11.30 at night. I remember, what I remember about that, too, is we all flew in a private a charter from LA and I remember Sly Stone walking up and down the aisle the whole time he was a real party guy keeping the energy up and uh, it was an amazing trip that one because we actually had, I think David Cassidy who was a friend of ours had come over and stayed out at that time. Um, the uh, Kaiser Estate out uh, out in um, can't remember Coco uh, Coco Head, yeah, well, that's where that incredible uh, historic house, and so we all just moved into this house for a week or so. You guys have this thing. It's neat to be, I'm, I'm privileged to get the two of you in one place, and I, I, you can finish each other's sentences. Sometimes, like, Dewey can kind of remember it, but Jerry can fill in the, the rest of the details. Has it been this sort of journey where, is that one of the things that keeps America going, is this kind of chemistry? Well, we joke about it, about oxen being yoked together. You know, there's a story of I mean, yoke oxen, pretty soon the tails go. Well, I tell you, there's a lot of truth to that, because we find ourselves sometimes shockingly similar issues, uh, you know, and, and I think it's just part and parcel. To go back to the, when you were asking about Dan, there was a thing that happened with Dan that I, it's anecdotal, but I'll tell it. it was, and Dan was with us for all the important 70s years, but he departed in 77. And just to give you an example, we all went to high school together. So when Dan left, there was never really 
a discussion or a possibility of replacing him because it really wasn't just musical. What we had going was something that went back to high school, and Dan was a part of all of that. We were all sons of servicemen and stuff. So I like to kind of think of those days that made that bond deeper than anything else. There's certainly L.A. is filled with fantastic musicians that we could have probably cherry-picked somebody, but it couldn't fill the other gaps, and that's kind of what comes to mind.